But I also saw some weird games by Winter Zero when he played this opening and then went fiends into Garks. And he had fiends without web in the end game against Wyvern. And the fiends were just completely useless in the fights. They were good for creeping, but in the fights they were completely useless. I forget who that was against. Maybe it was Focus? He ended up winning the game, in fact, but it looked weird. Acolyte sees the Farseer fast tech. This should not come as a surprise. This is what tons of works are doing at the moment. Oh, and he's going for the turtle pull. A player's forces are under attack. But the Farseer should be able to harass the DK pretty well. Again, because there's only three ghouls. What is there? Cannot creep with the ghouls. He can only creep with the skellies. Good deny. DK using a bunch of coils. There's also the thing when you creep with skeletons, you have to use way more mana for creeping because you need that additional damage. And you know, um, normally the DK always tries to get. Oh, did he steal that asset? Oh, he stole it! Oh, that's big! DK's gonna have a very difficult time getting to level 2. And I gotta say, I don't like this opening. At all. Against Orc. Once you have a couple of fiends and you get a decent mid game transition, it will become a lot better. For the late game uh, journey to tier 3, it can be really good. But it's so bad for the early game. Okay, look at the Farseer. He's gonna creep this camp now. Take that XP for himself. And the DK. Cannot do much at the moment. He's got one coil only left. Only another one and a half. And the Farseer got a mantle. That is a wonderful item for him. DK should be able to steal this last hit here, though. Oh, with the right click. Okay, nicely done. And being stuck on level one for a long time does not feel at all ideal. By the way, it is the double headhunter play, which is kind of expected. When you see this Ted Fiend build, you don't really want to go into Wyvern most of the time. I think Lynn is making the correct adjustment here. Oh, I want to see her running across the map because trying to creep this turtle camp away. But with there being three headhunters, he can't get this one either. I would say 1-0 has a very bad early game here. Skelly goes down, a little bit more XP. Farseer getting very close to level 2. A player's forces are under attack. Looks like 1-0 is waiting for tier 2, getting ready to pick up the Dark Ranger. But he's still only level 1. This is looking so bad for him. Farseer is going to get his own level 2 right here. Lin with a great start here on map 1. And slippers, that's great for the Shadow Hunter. If he goes for him. And indeed he does. DK at long last getting the green camp here. This will be level two, finally. But he's got no more out of necromancy. No more skellies. Unless he goes for a dog ranger. It is the Dark Ranger. Has to get her now to keep up the creep game. Good creeping here, taking the majority of the damage from the Dark Ranger. She can get coiled. New skellies being summoned. Then is going for a fast tier 3. And didn't go for a shop for a long time, by the way. Then was saving a lot of gold. Oh, and if he can now take this camp for himself, this would be wonderful for him. We have Hex first on the Shadow Hunter. So there is certainly kill threat against these fiends. A player's forces are under attack. Then looking very solid so far. Also protecting his headhunters pretty well. Looking for his opportunity to strike. 
Attacking two targets at the same time, also very valuable against the DK who can only coil one unit at a time. Oh, they might be forgetting about the next burrow though. I've been seeing too many orcs. Uh, forget the burrow and have a late TC because of it. Ah, it's gonna be the case again. Late burrow, late TC. TC levels are so important later on. You want to have them as quickly as you can normally. And now it's time to heal. The Gimbal Potion, very good item also for the TC later. And Lin is still feeling very fight ready. He's got a ton of headhunters. None of them have gone down this whole game. There's still no Lich, still no Orb. And I think the Farsa used a single Chain Lightning, right? This game. I think it's only been Wolves so far. Very cautious with the mana usage. Tier 3 is ready. Still no TC. Went for some other stuff first, like the first attack upgrade. Big creep here, of course. Nowadays there's uh, no... Root of the Watcher anymore, thank goodness. But there's still a good item. Oh, and the Fiend goes down. Coil not being used. He cancelled the use. Inland is looking very dominant so far. Very, very good play. He's gonna get the experience and the item here as well. Talisman of Evasion could be perhaps good for the TC later, but not an amazing item by any stretch. Lich is coming, in fact, quite a bit faster than the TC. A player's forces are Both Orc heroes trying to get to level 3. The DK is still quite a bit away. We can see a big experience lead right here on the Orc side. Lin certainly has the lead this game. Really solid play so far. Picking up the level 3 here. Oh, big mana potion. That is so good for the shadow. It's going to be so much about healing later on. So this item for Heat Wave, absolutely glorious. And gets level 3 here perfectly in time. TC didn't bring any heal salves. I think that's a mistake. He had the gold for it. Didn't buy any, though. Wait, is there no Kodo yet? I oh, know there's one Kodo. Okay, one Kodo is coming. Kodo upgrade as well. Next TC, or ra Lint rather, will probably want to work on uh, attack upgrades. That's how the Berserker army gets really strong in the ultra late game, with crazy upgrades. You would love to get to 3-1 upgrades quickly, if you can. Lumber for Lin is looking good for that. TC, not quite level 2 yet. This level 2 is important. What is there's army? I would say not too impressive here. 3 2 1 levels only. It's level 2 on the TC. Only 3 fiends. And I think the ghoul army is better than the fiend army late game. Because the TC, somewhat ironically, has it easier to uh, land the perfect stomp against fiends. Because fiends just move more slowly compared to ghouls. Oh, good silence, but he breaks it with the invo potion. Was that the big one? No, it was just a small one. Going for the DK right away. Ooh, the dispel against the Hex was there just in time. TC moving forward. Only gets one target here, but that target will be a kill. Fiend goes down. TC has no ring of protection, which is pretty annoying. That is an item that you definitely want to have normally. And the Kodo gets an easy devour here. 1 to 0. Not with his best play so far today, here on this first map. We've seen him better before. He just seems to be behind pretty much this whole game. I would love to see an Orb of Lightning, by the way, on Len, to find some procs. Len's throwing out so much damage right here. Oh, going for the Lich as well with the Stomp. Almost had enough there for the kill. Doesn't quite have it in the end, though. TC very hurt now. Heal scroll was needed. TC is... Oh my god! 
getting away with an, on 11 HP. And this cost um, indeed a lot of items. The big mana is gone, the invuln has gone, the heal scroll is gone. But he has been trading very, very favorably. PC running on home, he's going to be healing. This is where the other can start to take over, with heroes attacking from range, with statues healing, and with kiting being active, but the levels aren't there. He's level 4 DK, he needs level 3 Dark Ranger, and ideally also level 3 Lich. A player's forces are under Once there though, it's not in strong of enough, strong enough of a position here to be fighting well down in supply. He's still fighting. He's trading pretty damn well, I gotta say. <sighs> the coils just barely coming in in time. Burrows saving the fiends here pretty well. Lin's mana is indeed very, very low. But also no statues anymore. No region on the ground at the moment. And here comes the TC. And that should be a double. One fiend and a second. Lin went to drop keep, by the way, not being greedy. Pretty low on upgrades. 1-0 only. I would have expected more on 50 supply, but I guess Lin really wanted to be fight ready as best as he could. Speed scroll, engage. Looking for a big connected TC storm ready right here. Oh, beauty. There's one coil though, but the perfectly timed hex prevents it. And that is GG. Lin takes map one with very solid play. Definitely outplaying 1-0 to zero here. 1-0 to zero not showing his best game. And Lin was ready to punish. And he punished the build here very well also. Ted Fiends is one of 1 to Zero's favorite things to go for. I really don't think it's the best build against Orc. I really don't. As you can see right there, the DK was stuck on level 1 forever, didn't get level 3 for a long time, never got level 4, never enabled his other heroes to be creeping quickly with lots of ghouls, with aura skellies and all that. The Ted Fiend build is just a very slow build out the gate. And I don't think you can afford that. I don't think you can afford that against the top orcs in the world. I would certainly suggest a return back to a ghoul build opening for 1-0. to zero. We'll see what he will have planned for map number 2. This will be, of course, his map pick. And map 2 is going to be Northern Isles. This means that level 2 creeping should be easier for him, even if he goes for Ted Fiends, because he's going to get more XP more easily from the first few camps. Normally this map is considered very good for faster headhunters, because you can put pressure on the opponent right away. And also creep the middle fairly reliably. Try to take map control early, creep the middle, steal the invulns, and play a suffocating playstyle. A little bit of a disappointing showing by 1-0, to, to be honest. This was uh, not the top performance that we've seen by him before at times. If he doesn't show something more impressive, this could be a quick 2-0 for Lin. If Lin keeps playing as well as he was there on map 1. Alright, let's see if 1-0 to zero can step it up a notch. On his map, Northern Isles. Sorry, gotta blow my nose real quick. cold is still not quite behind me. I've been a little bit sick over the last few weeks. Since March 4th was the first day that I've been sick and this cold has been very persistent man. It has not let go of me yet. Hopefully over the course of this week it will. So it is by the way when they're going back to the old school ghoul opening. I like that a lot more. Oh! 
And Lin is going for a Blade Master fast chop into tech. This is something we've seen from uh, Focus, for example, played really well, especially on Twisted Meadows. Blade Master into Wyvern. The bigger the map, the more that you can delay, the more that you can lame, the better it is for this playstyle. Northern Isles. Not exactly the hugest map. Not exactly the most perfect map for lame playstyle. I think if 1 to 0 plays really clean early and doesn't allow the blade any last hits, this should be good for 1 to 0. If the orc goes for a quick blade master like we see here, it's very important for the undead to buy dust of appearance. And it has to be the priority for the undead to not let the blade master steal anything. Oh, a skull. Hold on. Oh, he's trying to creep the natural. The blade master is not going to be going there. There's no scout here for Lin. Ooh, this is lucky for 1 to 0. If the blade master had shown up here, this would have been a disaster for him. But the blade is oblivious. Both players played without a scout. And so the DK is going to be able to creep this camp for free. Get level 2 right away. And this does favor 1 to 0. Oh, unless the blade can steal this item. Oh, that would be big. Oh, the blade could steal the item here if he has the time. Oh, the DK though is coming back. I think the blade has to give up the last hit to try to get the item. DK also wants the item. Who's got the faster fingers? It's the blade. He gets the gloves. Which is not too bad. Oh, and he misses the last hit just by a hair. You can see the DK's experience is way superior. Good last hit here though. The blade gets out. He's got some items to heal. But the Death Knight certainly has a clear XP lead. Trying to get level 3 as quick as he can. Trying to creep dragon level 1 is risky if you don't have any rings or consumables. I mean, it depends. It always depends. But this is a very hard keep creep camp for 3 ghouls only. If the blade is there right away, you can just start attacking the DK or the ghouls. And the undead has to abandon. The undead will not get level 2. So, no. In this case, uh... Level 1 harassment would have been perfect. But of course, the orc has limited scouting. Orcs almost never go for a peon scout, so he couldn't know. Blade Master got one ghoul. Getting a little bit closer to level 2, but it's the DK here who is almost level 3 already. This is really good for 1 to 0. Just this little murloc here would do it. Big mana as well. Great items for 1 to 0. And it's Raider Walker, tier 3. Whoa! What? What's he going to do against destroyers? In theory, Raider Walker gets completely obliterated by destroyers. Because there's no barracks, there's no berserkers. Oh, this seems interesting, certainly, but also very risky by Lin. Shadow Hunter now out. Finally, Lin has an opportunity to be a bit more aggressive. But the DK is full of mana. I'm not even sure if he can get a ghoul here. He can force some mana, though. Yeah, one to zero so far in full control. Um, a player's forces are under attack. Very interesting. One to zero is going Garks. He is expecting Wyvern. But there's no Wyvern yet. Just a raider so far. Raider is spotted. Gargoyle not cancelled. 
Yeah, I've never seen this build before that Lin is playing here. I wonder how much he practiced it. A player's forces are under attack. A little bit of hex creeping now as well. Lin's experience gain has been dreadful. Dreadfully slow this game. But he can catch up, especially once he has a decently sized army, maybe a TC third. I hope he's going TC third. With a tech as quick as this, it could be really good. Oh, speaking of really good, that's a sick item. Sick item for the blade. Walkers are very good against ghouls. The magic damage is actually really good. But again, I ask, what's he gonna do against destroyers? If the blade is giga stacked and he's got orb of lightning, that could be a way, maybe, but destroyers have 850 HP. That's that's a lot. Plus coils. Plus lots of mana on this DK. Oh boy. Mana stone and mana potion. Ideally, Lin would like to strike before destroyers are ready. And indeed, they are not ready yet. This is a really good timing for Lin. Frenzy and Destroyer form, both not yet upgraded. Oh, he's trying to go for the statue. Ooh, this would be a sick snipe. If he can get it. Spiritling is protecting everything right here. Downside for Lin is there is only level 1 Shadow Hunter. He doesn't have Heal Wave yet. He's pretty close now. Great timing by Lin, but he knows. Time is running out. I guess the tier 3 upgrades will soon be ready. Oh, but this is beautiful, Berlin. Another hex, another kill. He got the level 2. And look with the upgrades. They're just a little bit too late. One to zero getting caught out on the map. Didn't respect enough what his opponent had. Hindsight's 2020, of course. Now we know that should have been more passive. Beautiful timing. Beautiful timing, Berlin. And now he knows the tide is turning. With the upgrades getting ready for the undead, he's gonna speed scroll, get out, the TC's ready. And that was a beautiful trade for Len. He didn't even lose anything, except for the speed scroll, I guess. Item here, circlet, always good. And Lin has, with this push, taken the lead, I think. But there is still a way to win this game. 1 to 0, and that is Destroyers. There is still no counter to Destroyers. Except for a Blade Master. Which is a big if. I think he has to go for crit level 2 here. I don't think he can afford to go Windwalk 2. Master training for the Walkers. Ready really early. That's pretty nice. Oh, nice steal. The Coil. I think he got the last hit. Okay, here's a destroyer. The first of probably many. Lin is playing very passive now, as he should. He's got a defensive setup. He's got a tower. He's got the uh, cement upgrade. A player's forces are under attack. Maybe even spike barricades would make sense. Dude, this could be a game for torrents. <laughs> Possibly, because we got walk uh, master walkers already. Of course, Torrents do absolutely nothing against Destroyers. And Destroyers are still the trump card for 1-0. to zero. I think you should just go crazy hard on Destros. Again, there's no counter to them. Then did go for Windwalk 2, though. He's got really good Blade Master items, but he doesn't have an Invuln. Going for Barracks now. Really late Players into the game. Are under don't know if this steel armor upgrade is worth it, really. Only the two raiders benefit from it. Of course, the walkers and the kodos don't. Playing the blade master well here. He's scouting with a blade. And if he sees the other is far enough away, then feels safe enough to creep. Because right now, out in the open, one of their armor is stronger. Especially thanks to the spoilers. Lin has to play still a cautious game. 
His ultra late game can be very strong. These orc heroes scale insanely well with levels. But that takes some time. Let's go for the red cap. I like the spike barricades, by the way, making this base even sturdier, especially against ghouls. It is going hard defense mode right here. It's going to be level 3 Shadow Hunter and a big item. Lots of great items that he could get right here, and it is. Wait, I didn't see it. Ah. Walsing Battle Rums. That is pretty unlucky. It's the aura he already had. He just found a weaker version of it. And what is there is going to go for the push. Lots of peons, though, jumping in the burrows. This is going to be a hard base to attack. As what is there will soon find out. But he's going to take out the beast theory right away. Oh, and Lindisco is just going for the counterattack. He is not interested in TPing home. He's just going to buy a TP now. And then... Use it if uh, what is there also a TP zone, a town is but what is there doesn't have a TP. In fact, oh, Barracks goes down. Berserker didn't make it out. There's an expansion, by the way, for one to zero right here that Lin hasn't seen yet. This could be the difference maker right here. Oh, going for the Black Citadel. Must make sure not to lose this one. TP for TP trade. Nicole Nova something? Not really. If the Blade Master scouts the expansion now, I think Lin is going to be in a decent spot. He could go for a tiny Great Hall if he wishes. Although his lumber is low. I guess he can't really afford it. Oh, he's not looking for it. He's not looking for the Undead expansion. This could be enough for 1-0 to zero to pull ahead now. Lin's got lots of gold. So much gold. And... Now the Blade Master has seen it. Don't think he has the time to take out the Haunted, but he has time to take out the Ziggurat. And Link can just build a big army now, and then go for a tiny Great Hall later, if he wants. And always also threaten the Acolytes over here. Great thing, by the way, also about walkers in the ultra late game is you can dispel the silence. You don't have to break it with the invuln to enable the TC stomp. And if Spirit Link doesn't get dispelled, it is very strong. But of course, there will be destroyers. There will be lots of destroyers, I would imagine. Really cool game here by Lin so far. Very unusual build that I had never seen before. And it's still rich, by the way. He could still just still go for a tiny. Oh, gets another acolyte right there. One zero feels forced to stay home because he knows the blade master can always just kill the acolytes easily. Do we have a tiny? Yes, we do. All right. Lin gets the tiny, and the skellies might not quite see it in time. They just expired. Don't know if the lingering vision caught it. And the peons making their way over right away. L lumber's kind of low for Lin, but I don't think he needs much lumber anymore. He just needs to pump out units right now. I love the shop right here. Going for a tower as well. Alright, he comes 1 to 0. He's got the supply lead slightly. The big question still is, can Lin deal with the destroyers? He doesn't have much anti-air. But he's gonna try to net them right away with the raiders falling back to the towers. Lots of dispel here on Lin. Against the silence, against the uh, frost armor as well. Oh, invo potion used still. Bit of a waste here by Lin. Didn't need to do that. But the stomp was decent against the ghouls regardless. Status used caught in the back. If those can be taken out, that would be absolutely wonderful. But one Kodo Beast also sniped. And here goes... 
The next one. In just a moment. Walker to spell, good against the skeletons as well, of course. One statue is gone, but the other one is still up. Kodo is gonna be going down, although there is no unit being returned from it. Mana starting to drop low. Lich now completely dry, doesn't have items anymore, no potions to get the mana back. Shadowhunter has a shop coming up, the shop is now ready. Lin having a pretty good fight so far, he's gonna pop the invul on the Blade Master trying to take out the statue, it's a crucial part of the army. And the statue does go down, Blade now almost level 4, Lin with a really good hold so far. Just wasted the invul on the TC, that was the one mistake, I suppose. Nice stomp, once again hits the back line, damage being reduced. More kills going Lin's way, the TC should be pretty close to 3 now. Yep, he's very very close. And the Blade Master also about to level up, the Dark Ranger! Almost going down right here. The destroyers are still not dealt with. Again, we see the difficulty here with this build. Dealing with destroyers, very tough for Lin. But he does hold. He may not have killed all the destroyers, but he did kill all the ghouls. And now he's got the levels. Now he's got 4-3-3. Now Lin is truly online with an expansion of his own. And I would say from this point onward, Lin is going to be favored. Okay, oh, pretty hurt here. Dispel against the Frost Armor. One Stomp didn't hit the DK though. Death Knight very hurt. A crit could be his end. Death Knight. Uh oh. Playing with fire right here. Where's the invuln? Oh my god. Coils being used. Next Walker going down. But the Walk Heroes are indeed very strong now. Although there is not much mana left. And that's gonna be one destroyer going down though. First, I think, of all these destroyers. I guess one more did die. A player's forces are under attack. Expansion running on both sides. Lin is very low mana. But he doesn't seem to be too worried about that. He's got an ensnare. Hits it on the Lich. DK is too far away. Nice timing with the dispel. Oh, big mistake by 1 to 0. DK was way, way too far away. That was a little sloppy. Very expensive revive, although 1 to 0 could afford it. Now Lin's gonna fall back. Time for him to heal up. He needs clarities and heal selves. And 1 to 0 is coming back for round 2. Dark Ranger almost level 4, so is the Lich. Lin needs to repair. Quickly! No, he's not doing it. He's pulling back the peons. 1 to 0 still has a supply lead. A clear supply lead. 1 to 0 is looking for reinforcements. Looks like he's ready to give up the expansion. Oh, he used some ancestral spirit here in the middle. Oh, wasn't thinking about that. But I guess at this point, the Great Hall is doomed. Oh, maybe it isn't. First hit purge on the Lich. Trying to go for the kill right here with a stomp. I think he might have it. There's the stomp. Right click's coming through. No display anymore against the Frost Armor. Hex though. Backstab! Oh, and he gets it! Just in time. <coughs> the arm for the coil was in the air, but a little bit too late. That purge might have just saved the expansion for Lin. Statues go down quickly when they're getting target fired, and it is enough. 1 to 0. We'll lose this game. Lin takes it with a very impressive showing. Of an unusual style. Blade Master Fast Tech. Into Raider Walker. Nobody really plays this. But Lin able to pull it off.